and try. So you can start talking, I'll pull it up. It's got to install. Okay, good. Okay. You can start. Okay, so I'm going to present a project that's uh, on unraveling the impacts of biofuel production on. Yes, there it is. So I'm leveling biofuel impacts on ecosystem services, human well-being, and poverty alleviation in sub-Saharan Africa. I'm listed there as a presenter, but otherwise this is a project that involves several institutions and several people here. There's Francis and Patricia who are involved in the project. So the, the, what, what's the main motivation behind this project? These are the kind of images you tend to see when you talk of biofuel. So it's about competition between land and food, for instance, which so with sort of people taking different sides, almost two sides to it. So there are those who see it as a very bad. It's leading to land unavailability while without looking that there could possibly be a middle ground. And so with this research, the, the aim is to try and identify what is the true human well-being and poverty alleviation effects of biofuel expansion in Africa. So for instance, by using land available to produce biofuel, people would lose land and ecosystem services derived from that land. And uh, with less land for agricultural production, there can be food insecurity and poverty. But then when you look from the other side as well, engaging in biofuel production could provide the much needed income and employment creation and this income could actually contribute to food security if during uh, at a time of non-harvest period, so people with income coming from uh, biofuels would be more food secure, for instance, than those who are not. But then these, these are just assumptions. There's been a very limited attempt to empirically test them. S so the, the main questions for the study are that uh, how can biofuel production and use become an agent of poverty alleviation in least developed countries? And then it's testing three main hypotheses that uh, those who are engaged in biofuel projects have higher income. There's higher income opportunities from this than engaging in other agricultural activities. And that small based biofuel projects would offer higher income and benefits than large scale plantations that target export market. And then the extra income from this small scale feedstock production, where feedstock we are mainly looking at sugarcane and jatropha, can actually increase the resilience of households to livelihood shocks. So at this stage, we are at the point of developing methodologies for the field work, <laughs> and which will be done looking at uh, case studies in Malawi, in Swaziland, <coughs> and in Mozambique, where you have large scale plantations that target fuel for transport sector, and in Mozambique, you have a small scale ones that one of that produces fuel actually targeted as households at households for cooking, as a cooking fuel. So the, the whole approach, to the, the study adopts an ecosystem services approach. So we are in, in trying to look at the impact of biofuel. You look at the impacts on the whole ecosystem services. So provisioning services, regulating services, cultural, as well as supporting services. and. Uh, the way the different part partners, there are different methods for this. So for instance, there'll be life cycle analysis to look at the energy, impact on energy, on provisioning services will be focused on surveys. There'll be Im assessment of impact of biofuel production on water quality, which is going to do modeling and measurements. Then there's greenhouse gas emissions that's going to utilize life cycle analysis approach. 
but for SEI, our component is mainly on human well-being and poverty reduction. So I'm, I'm going next to discuss some of the methods we are still thinking through and developing for trying to quantify this impact. So our main sort of exposure variable, we are going to look at the biofuel production. So how does it impact on poverty? And at, on this, we look at various scales of production. So small scale production versus large scale, jatropha versus sugarcane, ownership type links to market, which market is targeted. And we are also going to look at use. So does biofuel that's used for transport have more poverty alleviation impact than if it's targeted at cooking or at lighting, for instance. And then our outcome, then we are looking at poverty alleviation, which is very complex. And so we are spending a lot of time trying to define what are the indicators of poverty and how we measure them. So income opportunities is Obvious, but then there's also income uses. So for instance, the income coming from biofuels, so what is it used for? Because that could determine how it impacts on poverty. So we, may, we are looking at some variables derived from the multidimensional poverty index, where you look at health, education, and living standard dimension. So, but we may also consider progress out of poverty index and other indicators relevant to biofuels and to the study settings. So the, the approach we will adopt, we, we are looking at two possible approaches, some a sort of cross-sectional studies. So in the villages, we'll go and sample households that have been engaged in biofuel production and those who have not, and then try to compare their income status and their poverty status between the two groups. And then we had also with a longitudinal approach as well, so we compare the same household to itself. What was its situation before it engaged in biofuel production and what is its situation afterwards? So based on participants' recall or some secondary data as well. So using the two methods. But uh, a big concern is, of course, confounders. For instance, you may find households engaged in biofuel production probably have higher income, but they could have had this before even they started engaging in biofuel. So it's their socioeconomic status that determined that they engaged in this production. And we, without accounting for these factors, we could lead to a, have a very wrong conclusion. So we'll document all these factors as well. And in the analysis, we'll try to adjust for them. So poverty, we'll use two dimensions. And then using descriptive statistics and regression modeling, then we can account for some of this. Thank you.